Well, this is 15th lecture in the series of uh, mechanics of metal forming. Last lecture we discussed the yield, the concept of yield, yielding and flow and the related yield criteria uh, and related issues. We would continue further from the last lecture. So, uh, as let us recall back where uh, we started uh, determining the constants, uh, particularly the values of uh, uh, the k value from the last uh, equation number 20, where we derived the, the yield function in terms of the direct stresses uh, which is uh, sufficient for causing yielding in a material uh, and we looked into the one Meissner criteria as explained there are two very popular criteria for yielding one the von Meissner and the Tresca. So, let us start with the last that we had the equation number uh, 20 basically uh, and then let us. So, we started that uh, uh, the for the very complex uh, situation of the stresses and let us apply it for the simple tension as well as pure shear. So, we took the example for the uniaxial tension case where uh, the test can the 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 yield function, the yield criteria equation number 20, if you apply the case for uh, the uniaxial tension, then one can have uh, the relationship like uh, uh, the, the, the stresses are only in uh, one direction. So, if you recall it, so, we got the equation like uh, uh, the particular equation uh, that we had sigma x x minus thrice k 1 square is equal to 0. So, the k 1 is the constant that to be determined. So, we can uh, calculate it uh, k 1 as 1 by root 3 sigma x x and that can also be written as 1 by root 3 sigma. Since uh, in pure tension or compression, the yield occur when sigma x x reduces the yield stress equal to sigma. So, uh, the k 1 which is the constant was to be determined as 1 by root 3 sigma. So, sigma is your uh, the, the material property, the flow yield, yielding uh, the yield of the material, the, the yield stress of the material. Now, for the second case where if you apply the equation number 20 for pure shear case, the criteria yielding criteria 1 minus. So, uh, it can be for the pure shear case what will happen? That means, uh, sigma x x and sigma y y and sigma uh, uh, z z would be 0 and therefore, because the pure shear, so sigma x y would be equal to plus minus uh, say the, the shear, shear the material uh, of the shearing constant of the material. Say we one can then write down plus minus a k. So, if uh, where the, the k is taken as the yield stress in shear, where just like we took the sigma as the the, the yield stress in tension. Similarly, the k let us take it as the yield stress in tension uh, shear. 
So, if you substitute the value uh, in the yield criteria which was previously uh, in the equation number 20, so one can get k which is it would be equal to k 1. So, that is the k 1 is the constant. So, uh, uh, since all the, uh, the stresses except sigma x y are 0 from equation number 23 and uh, quantities which is there uh, in where the k is equal to k 1, the relationship between the yield stress in tension and shear can be very well correlated as k is equal to uh, sigma divided by under root 3. So, the one Meiser's yield criteria therefore, can be written in this form which is given in equation number 27 and that comes out to be very simplified manner uh, that is uh, the function, the yield function would be 1 by 6 and uh, having uh, 4 major elements, the element 1 will have therefore, like in equation 27 sigma x x minus sigma y y square plus second term is sigma y y minus sigma z z square plus third term as sigma z z minus sigma x x square plus the fourth term which will consist as 6 and in uh, bracket sigma x y the all uh, the shear component that is sigma x y square plus sigma y z square plus sigma z x square and this all together and minus sigma uh, 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 square by 3 and that must be equal to 0, because the k from the equation number 27 it comes out to be sigma by root 3 and therefore, k square uh, will replace by uh, it will be replaced by sigma square by 3. So, this equation number 27 then it can also be written in another form in tensorial manner. So, if it this, this function 27 is represented in in tensor form. So, it becomes f is equal to 1 by 2 and uh, derivative part of the tensor stress tensor i j and multiplied by again the derivative part of the stress tensor i t minus sigma square by 3 and that must be equal to 0. So, the uh, if you square, uh, square it out on the both side then one can also calculate it in the full form of the equation that is the, uh, the, the stress in case of one Meiser's uh, criteria can be written as shown in equation number uh, uh, here uh, equation number 30 like. So, that becomes 3 by 2 and uh, then we have uh, sigma x x derivative part is square plus sigma y y derivative square plus sigma z z derivative square plus twice of the shear all shear component uh, summation of those with the square terms and then has to be under root because the equation 29 it is a square of that. So, under root should be, be there and uh, then it can further be simplified by taking it out few of the term and rearrange in, in the form of equation number 31. And therefore, uh, one can see it becomes half of and in four terms sigma x x minus sigma y y square first term, second term as the sigma y y minus sigma x uh, z z square and plus third term as uh, sigma z z minus sigma x x square plus six of the shear component square of the summation of the square of those shear components and this is all in under root. The same equation 31 can be uh, are further arranged and it can be then simplified because we can write down the x, y and z as the principal direction as 1, 2, 3 as stated earlier also. So, this equation 32 it's, it becomes a very simplified manner and uh, Therefore, it is half of sigma 1 1 minus sigma 2 2 square plus sigma 2 2 minus sigma 3 3 square plus uh, sigma 3 3 minus sigma 1 1 square under root and that is the basis of your uh, 1 Meissner's yield criteria. Now, let us see what is flow rule. So, 
So, correlating this will function, one can see that uh, a flow rule can be devised. So, a general flow rule in fact uh, that would give the plastic stress strain relation uh, uh, can be derived using the concept of the plastic potential. So, what is plastic potential? Say, if you go on building the, the yield, uh, you, uh, stresses. So, a, a stage would come when this stress potential that we will we may say as the plastic potential is sufficient to cause yielding. So, this is what the concept of plastic potential can be viewed in. It is based on the uh, in fact a, a hypothesis that there exists a plastic potential which is in fact a scalar function of uh, the stresses. So, from this plastic potential uh, uh, the plastic strain increment that is d uh, epsilon i j the, the set of all these increments can be obtained by just by differentiating uh, 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 a function uh, which is g sigma i j. So, if you differentiate with respect to the strain increment one can get this uh, as the uh, which is defined as the uh, plastic potential g sigma i j and that can be written in, in the form of equation number 33, where d delta one can see here. So, that means it becomes the equation as the uh, d epsilon i j, which is the increment of the strain tensor and it becomes to deva g sigma i j deva sigma i j and d lambda. As earlier stated, the d lambda is a non-negative constant. The above definition that is equation number 33, uh, which, which is of plastic uh, strain increment is more broad and it is a general uh, and therefore, uh, is called as a non-associated flow rule because d epsilon i j is not associated with the yield function f now, if you recall. In the special case when g is, when the g that is plastic potential function g becomes equal to the flow function, then it may lead to the association of the flow rule, it can be associated very well. So, the, the one Meissner's uh, yield criteria where we the defined the yield function as f which was previously derived as equation number 27. If you put this into, if it is associated, so it can be replaced with current Meissner's so it can be written as uh, deva f and by deva uh, sigma x x. So, that would be equal to simply 1 by 6 as we have seen. Uh, twice sigma x x minus sigma y y minus twice sigma uh, z z minus sigma x x and that would be equal to simply 1 by 3 in bracket twice of the sigma x y sigma y z minus sigma uh, uh, z z z. So, and that can be further uh, arranged uh, in the form of equation number 34 here and that can further be uh, compress the sigma m and therefore it becomes equal to sigma x minus sigma m and that is what we have mentioned earlier the derivative part from the start was correlated with the hydrostatic part of the curve. So, uh, this and therefore the equation uh, from the earlier equation 33 can now be uh, the strain uh, 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 increment can be now said as d uh, epsilon i j is equal to d lambda and deva f sigma i j divided by uh, uh, deva sigma i j. And therefore, one can further arrange this and that, that can be put in the form of equation on the 35 as d epsilon x x divided by derivative part of the stress x x and that becomes equal to d lambda. Similarly, one can 
uh, write it for the y y component and z z component as well as. So, if you substitute for an example the value the derivative part of the stress in x x direction from the equation 35. So, uh, equation 34 that we uh, where the sigma m was introduced in the equation. So, it can be written as uh, d epsilon uh, z z uh, sorry g epsilon x x and that would be equal to 1 by third of uh, within bracket twice of the sigma x x minus sigma y y minus sigma z z and that would be multiplied by further by d lambda and that can further be written as 2 by third d lambda in bracket sigma x x minus half of the sigma y y plus sigma z z and this equation 37 uh, uh, can be again uh, written for for the the other counterpart for the uh, uh, a, a incremental strain in y y direction and incremental strain in z z direction as well as. So, from the equation previous equations 27 and uh, 33 one can say that deva f that is a flow function deva f divided by deva uh, sigma x y that is the with respect to shear it would be become as the shear component as that for the direct part we did. So, the equation because the is uh, equation number 27 where sigma x y and sigma y z and sigma uh, y z and uh, uh, sigma x y and other thing have been clubbed together as twice of the sigma square x y twice of the sigma square y z and twice of the sigma square z. Therefore, one can further propose it for the shear component as shown in, uh, in equation number uh, 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 in equation number uh, uh, just uh, and uh, so it can be represented in the form of equation number 38 so it becomes uh, deva uh, uh, deva epsilon xy divided by uh, uh, stress that is the shear stress xy and that would be equal to d lambda. And similarly, for the uh, other component can also be written. So, if we associate the flow rule for um, one mysis, uh, so in general it can be written as in equation number 40. So, it can be then written as d uh, epsilon x x divided by derivative part of the stress x x is equal to d epsilon y y divided by derivative part of the stress in y y direction and it would be equal to d epsilon z z divided by the derivative part of the uh, stress in z z direction and similarly it can also be equated with uh, uh, shear component of the, uh, the stresses that is uh, it would be equal to d sigma x y divided by uh, 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 sigma x y and it will be d sigma y z divided by uh, sigma y z and it would, it would be further equal to uh, the other component and it would be equal to your uh, d lambda. So, the same thing can be represented in the tensor form which is in uh, given in equation number 41. That means, in the tensor form the, the uh, strain tensor increment of the strain tensor would be equal to the stress tensor multiplied by d lambda. 
So, this forms the basis of incremental strain and uh, then based on these uh, incremental strain now a generalized stress and generalized strain increment can also be proposed. Because it is useful to define a uh, generalized uh, stress that is uh, sigma bar, if we say it as a sigma bar which is represented as generalized stress. Uh, and a similarly a generalized strain which would be represented strain increment uh, in the like it can be represented as d epsilon bar. So, that the plastic work increment which we computed earlier per unit volume say it is d w can be evaluated as because the multiplication of these two stress generalized stress multiplied by the generalized strain increment and therefore, it can be written as uh, in the equation uh, number 42 here that is d w would be equal to uh, sigma i j d epsilon i j in the form of tensor and that the same thing same thing can be extended this tensor and uh, uh, it would if you apply the, uh, the relationship that we had the equation number 40 earlier. So, this d w can be written as sigma uh, i j prime that is the deuteric part multiplied by d epsilon i j that is the incremental strain tensor and that would be simply written as sigma bar multiplied by d epsilon bar. So, that is the generalized multiplication of generalized stress and strain. It is convenient to define the uh, uh, generalized stress to be equal in magnitude to the yield stress in simple tension. Thus, from the uh, if we look into the one Meissner yield criteria equation number 27, it can then be further written in this form of the equation 43, which is now it is generalized stress. Which, you, which can be equal to the sigma and that would be under root 3 by 2, deuteric part of the strain tensor and again deuteric part of the strain tensor. So, this format of equation 43 uh, is a generalized strain increment can now be from this equation can now be calculated very easily from and then it will be written as d uh, epsilon i j is equal to d lambda and the uh, sigma i j prime that is the deuteric part or simply it can be written as d epsilon i j d epsilon i j and it is equal to d lambda square and uh, sigma i j prime sigma i j prime it can further be separated on the left side as the sigma uh, lambda is uh, d sigma uh, d lambda is square and it would be equal to the uh, the numerator as d epsilon i j d epsilon i j and in the denominator it becomes uh, the deuteric part of the strain tensor and again deuteric part of the multiplication two times. So, and that can if you substitute the value of uh, those thing then uh, it, it will be coming as 2 by 3 d lambda is equal to under root numerator part it is 2 by 3 d epsilon i j d epsilon i j divided by in the denominator as 3 by 2 sigma i j prime sigma i j prime that is the and therefore, the incremental work can be written as in equation number 45 that means, it is generalized stress multiplied by generalized strain increment and that can be further written as uh, sigma i j multiplied by d, c, d, uh, d epsilon i j and that is the deuteric part it can be then replaced because it can be uh, deuteric part and the, the strain increment tensor and then one can further 
convert the equation number 41 using that d increment of the strain generalized strain can be now put in the form of equation number 46. So, it becomes numerator part as uh, 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 sigma i j prime derivative part sigma i j prime d lambda divided by under root 3 by 2 uh, sigma i j prime sigma i j prime. So, this equation uh, once we substitute the value of d lambda from 40 equation number 44 earlier derived, it can then further be written as the strain increment generalized strain increment as under root 2 by 3 and uh, strain increment i j and strain increment i j. So, from this particular uh, the previous equation number 43 to this particular uh, this particular equation one can then say that the d lambda becomes 3 by 2 and uh, generalized strain increment divided by generalized stress. So, and then the associated flow rule can be written like here in equation number 49 that is the associated flow rule for 1 mices can now be written as d epsilon x x divided by sigma x x derivative and it should be equal to d epsilon y y divided by uh, derivative stress in y y direction and likewise uh, then the shear strain component associated with the shear stress and then here one the last term one can see it the whole thing becomes equal to 3 by 2 multiplied by uh, generalized strain increment divided by generalized stress and that must be equal to d lambda. So, this is what uh, the associated flow rule corresponding to one Weiser's criteria yield criteria stands. Let us see what is yield surface. Uh, we now this criteria can be represented on yield surface. So, what is yield surface? So, yield surface is a one can see the a, an hypothesis hypothetical surface that lies where it is assumed that the material is going to yield across the surface and that this yield surface becomes the concept of if you recall back uh, the uh, your necking. So, uh, you will see the, the material which if the material is uh, brittle, if the material is elastic it is a very specific cup and cone and the fracture and associated. So, one can define those situation with the help of yield, yield surface. So, to let us start with, so one Meissner's yield criteria we have already seen that it gives 3 by 2 derivative part of the stress i j tensor and de again derivative part of the this multiplication uh, minus sigma square is equal to 0, this is what the uh, the, the one Meissner's yield criteria. Okay. So, all of you should remember that this particular equation if you do it for the only direct stress can be written as sigma 1 1 square plus sigma 2 2 square plus sigma 3 3 square derivative all derivative part and that would be simply equal to under root 2 by 3 sigma whole square. This is a, an equation you can see it is a square term on the left and the other so it radius. So, what does it represent can you anybody can guess here yeah yes Manish yeah that is correct. So, uh, uh, it represents a, a equation of uh, of a sphere that has a radius under root 2 by 3 sigma and the principle uh, in the principle 
deuteric stress space that is uh, sigma uh, uh, 1 1 prime, sigma 2 2 prime and sigma 3 3 prime. So, uh, let us consider this one Meissner's uh, yield surface which is a spherical yield surface in the principal stress coordinate system and let the principal stresses at a point as shown in figure number uh, 6 here where the principal stresses at a point P in the stress space has been shown here one can see. So, uh, 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 if, if the P lies in the stress space of uh, sigma 1 1, sigma 2 2, sigma 3 3 then one can say that O P 1 is equal to uh, sigma 1 1, O P 2 is equal to sigma 2 2 and uh, similarly the O P 3 would be equal to sigma 3 3. Now, let us consider the line uh, O H which is equally inclined to each of the axis 3 axis as shown here in the figure. So, it is direction cosine if you calculate. So, it comes out to be because it is equally inclined with all the axis and therefore, it is direction cosine would be uh, uh, 1 by root 3, 1 by root 3, 1 by root 3 which we previously defined as L, M and N. So, the projection O N of O P on O H can be now found out. So, that becomes O N as uh, uh, sigma 1 1 by root 3 plus sigma 2 2 by root 3 plus sigma 3 3 by root 3 and therefore, the P N square uh, uh, can be written as uh, summation in a bracket sigma 1 1 deuteric sigma 2 2 deuteric sigma 3 3 deuteric minus 1 by third in bracket sigma 1 1 sigma 2 2 sigma 3 3 square. And if you simplify this equation P n square on the left side and right side this term, so that this can be further arranged and it becomes in the format of equation number uh, 51 as 1 by 3 sigma 1 1 minus sigma 2 2 square plus sigma 2 2 minus sigma 3 3 square plus sigma 3 3 minus sigma 1 1 square. So, this equation number uh, 51 uh, let us see here again to that this line which is H which is in equally inclined with all the axes. So, uh, uh, this particular uh, if the if you recall the equation number 32 earlier then one can write down the P n square in this form which is P n square is equal to 1 by third sigma 1 1 minus sigma 2 2 square plus sigma 2 2 minus sigma 3 3 square plus sigma 3 3 minus sigma 1 1 square and that should be equal to 2 by 3 sigma square and that is how the P n becomes under root 2 by 3 sigma. So, this yield locus it, it gives a yield locus and that locus is what? It is a it is a circle uh, having a radius under root 2 by 3 sigma. It that means it follows that one Meissner's yield criteria in principle stress is space if if it is replaced by a cylinder having a radius under root 2 3 sigma whose axis is the line which is uh, through the origin and which is in inclined equally with the uh, coordinate axis which is now shown here in uh, equation number uh, uh, 52 and the figure 7. It states where the states of the stress which now can be plotted uh, as a point within the cylindrical represent material in elastic state. So, uh, the hydrostatic stress does not affect yielding one can see here. Hence, the value of O n which is uh, from the previous equation number uh, 5 has no effect on yielding therefore. The intersection of the uh, this particular uh, yield cylinder uh, uh, with any plane which is perpendicular to its axis will be therefore, a circle. 
So, one can see here that it, uh, this represents a hexagonal cylinder and inside and outside represents your circular cylinder corresponding to one vices and this is the axis of cylinder which is equally inclined. So, uh, this is what a pipe plane. So, the pipe plane is a plane which is perpendicular to the axis of yield surface and which passes through the origin. Its equation uh, is therefore, sigma 1 1 plus sigma 2 2 plus sigma 3 3 is equal to 0 and therefore, it is a deuteric plane that is true. On the pi plane therefore, the positive principal axis that is uh, uh, if, if we see the O sigma 1 1, O sigma 2 2, O sigma uh, 3 3 from the center appear in which is to be inclined at 120 degree to each other which is shown here in equation uh, in figure number 8. And uh, 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 when negative axis of the principal uh, stress are included, the whole area of plane gets divided into 6 equal sectors as shown in figure number 8. The coordinates, the coordinates of the point P appears therefore, here as uh, uh, as shown here. If you project it on the point P on the uh, pi plane and therefore, the projected length that is O P dash if you see here if it is uh, can be calculated as under root 2 by 3 sigma 2 2 and uh, P 2 dash H 2 dash from the figure that becomes 2 by 3 under root sigma 2 3 3 and similarly the h dash p dash becomes the under root 2 by 3 sigma 1 1. If the Cartesian coordinate of the point p dash if it is taken with respect to o b and o d axis if say it is uh, the coordinate is x y then one can now find out x and in as shown in equation number uh, 53. So, x becomes under root 2 by 3 sigma 2 2 prime cos 30 and minus 2 by 3 under root uh, uh, sigma 1 1 prime cos 30 and that is nothing but sigma 2 2 minus sigma 1 by, by root and similarly, y can also be calculated as shown in here in 54 equation number 54. And therefore, if you see uh, these two, if you calculate from the equation number 53 and 54, so the r square it, 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 will, it would be equal to the x square plus y square and then it can be uh, it can be calculated here because the cos, cos square and sin square it becomes it can be separated out and therefore, r becomes as shown in equation number 55 as 1 under root 1 by 3 and the whole set of 3 terms like sigma 1 1 minus sigma 2 2 square plus sigma 2 2 minus sigma 3 3 square plus sigma 3 3 minus sigma 1 1 square that is the radius. And therefore, uh, one can see the position uh, if you it, it is projected as shown in figure 8 explained earlier and uh, it is projected uh, the point P when it is projected on the pi plane here. So, uh, if you take if you plot like this sector wise if you plot it like sector wise. So, one can find out the uh, the one minus uh, criteria on the pi plane here 
as uh, here in equation uh, in figure number 9. So, one can see that this is the line of pure shear and uh, B C D A dash C D dash and A corresponds to the different sectors. So, one can see here that uh, if you if you see the B C and D sector which is between. So, between the sector B C, so we have 1, 2, 3 and there are 12 sectors. So, if you take the sector B C, where sigma 2, 2 is greater than sigma 3, 3 and it is either uh, equal to uh, equal to uh, sigma 1, 1. That is the sigma 3, 3 lies between sigma 2, 2 and sigma 1, 1 and likewise all the sectors has got and one can draw this one Mises circle and it is a that means that cylinder on x y z principle stress when it is transferred to the pi plane it would look like a circle. And this circle one can see here the, the different regions and uh, then one can find out the, the value of theta which is mentioned here in uh, equation uh, figure number 8 that is uh, which is uh, projected on the pi plane the, the angle which is projected on the pi plane one can then uh, calculate uh, using equation number 56 here. So, that is simply theta is equal to 10 inverse y by x and if you substitute the value of y by x as previously calculated. So, one can find out the value as 10 inverse this whole set as shown in equation number 56. So, using the one Mises ill criteria uh, as in 32, the equation this particular equation 55 can be written as r is equal to where the radius of the circle is under root 2 by 3 sigma. The one Mises uh, ill locus therefore, is a circle which has got a radius equal to under root 2 by 3 sigma and it is again shown at here on the uh, the, uh, the for the plane stress if you plot it the plane stress so the the third stress is zero so the sigma 2 2 is zero so if the same thing if you draw it for the plane stress condition so now you have the uh, the same sectors looked like as an ellipse you can substitute in the equation previous equation and if you substitute you will get an equation of an ellipse. So, here the important is here that uh, the sectors turns into a, uh, an ellipse here. So, what we see that the for the plane stress where it is in two dimension uh, and uh, this will yield a rectangular axis. Uh, uh, coordinate uh, axis sigma 1 1 and sigma 3 3 and uh, the equation the yield criteria equation y 1 minus yield criteria equation would reduce to equation as shown in equation 58 that is sigma 1 1 square plus sigma 2 2 uh, 3 3 square minus sigma 1 1 sigma 3 3 and it is equal to sigma square and this also shows an ellipse having the major axis as 2 under root 2 sigma and the minor axis as 2 under root 2 by 3 sigma and uh, the ellipse is perpendicular which is bisecting bisectors of the angle uh, between sigma 1 and sigma 3 3 it has been shown here in uh, equation num uh, figure number uh, 10. So, this is what we have seen the one Mises yield criteria on pi plane and then when it is uh, it is uh, drawn corresponding to plane strain uh, plane stress condition where the sigma 2 2 is 0 then it looks like an ellipse. So, another important yield criteria is stress curve 
uh, the Tesca has been another very popular scientist long back around 1864, who discovered experimentally as well as that the plastic deformation is, is starts when the maximum shear stress, this is the Tresca criteria is also mentioned as the maximum shear stress theory. So, what he mentioned that uh, uh, the plastic deformation occurs uh, when the maximum shear stress uh, reduces the value of ill stress in pure shear. So, that is the pure shear theory, maximum shear stress reaches. So, based on this, uh, the one uh, the Tresca proposed a simple, very simple yield criteria, uh, which is shown, uh, which can be represented, uh, written in the form of equation number 59. So, the flow function can be written as f is equal to sigma max minus sigma minimum, and that is equal to constant. So, here sigma max and sigma minimum are algebraically largest and smallest principal stresses out of the three stresses given respectively. So, if the principal stress say uh, are uh, sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3, which satisfy the uh, inequalities like uh, sigma 1 is greater than or equal to sigma 2, 2 uh, and that is also greater than or equal to sigma 3, 3. That is the sigma 1, 1 is the greatest of all the three uh, stress field. So, the yield function, uh, the this yield function uh, as shown here in 59 can be represent, uh, uh, written it as f is equal to sigma 1 1 minus sigma 3 3 and minus the constant value. So, uh, what will happen in the pure shear if you apply it? So, for the pure shear it would be simply sigma 1 1 would be equal to minus sigma 3 3 and that would be the shear, shear stress of the material, because sigma 2 2 is 0 here. So, that gives a constant which is equal to 2 k and uh, if you apply it for the simple tension where uh, sigma 3 3 is 0, sigma 2 2 is also 0. So, sigma 1 1 would equal to be, uh, would be equal to the, uh, the tensile stress of the material sigma and that would be a constant equal to the sigma therefore, and therefore the yield criteria can be written as sigma 1 1 minus sigma 3 3 is equal to twice k r equal to twice k corresponding to the shear, pure shear and uh, if it is unidirectional tension then it is equal to uh, sigma. So, out of the this equation number 61, then one can say that the, uh, the tensile stress is equal to two times of the shear stress of the material. And the one mises, whereas if you recall back the uh, one mises criteria, this tensile stress was calculated at under root 3 k, that is in that was given in equation number 27, if you recall. So, this criteria that is uh, a, a Tresca criteria is obviously less complicated if you see mathematically, uh, if you compare with the von Mises. So, the criteria however, uh, does not take the, the intermediate stress into consideration and requires the knowledge of maximum and minimum principal stresses in uh, has to be taken. So, that is the difference. So, if we look into the concept of plastic potential again, so the uh, where you have a, uh, a function a plastic potential uh, g sigma i j and uh, uh, the, the increment of the strain, strain increment and it was correlated with d lambda. So, uh, the flow rule for uh, Tresca yield criteria can now be generated. So, if you recall the, the function that the plastic potential function uh, equation. So, the Tresca criteria that, that would be simply written as 
which is f is equal to sigma 1 1 1 or sigma 3 is equal to twice k, where the sigma 1 is 1 1 is the highest and therefore, it can be written as uh, deva g sigma i j divided by uh, deva sigma i j and this can be evaluated by replacing g with function f which is your uh, Tresca function and therefore, it can be written as a in equation number 63 as uh, d deva f divided by deva uh, sigma 1 1 and it is equal to 1 and therefore, uh, and uh, deva f deva similarly uh, sigma 2 2 is would be 0 and deva f by uh, deva sigma 3 3 would be equal to minus 1. And therefore, one can say that uh, the strain increment in, uh, in 1 1 direction is equal to d lambda similarly strain increment in uh, and because uh, the 2 uh, sigma uh, d epsilon 2 2 is 0 and therefore, d epsilon 3 3 can be evaluated as minus d lambda which is shown here in equation 64 or simply it can also be written as uh, d epsilon 1 1 is equal to minus uh, d epsilon 3 3. And therefore, now based on these for the Tresca criteria similarly, the generalized stress and generalized strain increment can be proposed in the incremental plastic work form. And if you recall back just like we did it for uh, uh, case of uh, um, one mices, one can then write down uh, the incremental work done that is the plastic work done which would be equal to sigma i j tensor and uh, uh, multiplied by the incremental strain tensor and that can be further written as generalized stress multiplied by generalized strain increment and that can be further ex expanded as shown in here in 66 equation number 66. So, that is the three terms. Uh, corresponding to 1 1, 2 2 and 3 3 directions. And therefore, the Tresca flow rule now if you apply corresponding to equation number 64. So, one can find out d w that is the incremental work done would be equal to simply sigma 1 1 minus sigma 3 3 d lambda. And if we set the generalized stress which is equal to sigma and that is nothing but sigma 1 1 minus sigma 3 3. The generalized stress increment that is d epsilon rho can be uh, prime can be uh, obtained as d uh, epsilon generalized strain increment which is equal to d lambda and that is equal to uh, strain increment uh, in 1 1 direction. Because if you recall earlier equation number 64 uh, 65, so that becomes your uh, equation number 69 here. So, we would continue further uh, the, the final equation like we derived it for. So, uh, we would further continue. So, I would like to thank you once again for your patience and uh, uh, in the next lecture, uh, uh, these two criteria we would see on the experimental basis where it stands. Both the criteria are good, but if you recall the, the, the figure number 8, 9 and 10 where the the ill criteria the the it was also drawn for the Tresca that because Tresca we did not it started by the time. So, I did not mention there, but it was drawn there also. So, you will see 
uh, on the even the pi plane uh, the, uh, the cylinder that is the round cylinder corresponds to the one mices and uh, the hexagonal cylinder likewise the circle complete circle corresponds to the uh, 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 one mices and the uh, hexagonal polygon hexagonal polygon uh, corresponds to the tresca and on the pi plane similarly the ellipse which is the ellipse and it is a hexagonal ellipse form. So, uh, we would verify experimentally people have already verified it and right now I can say the one mices is much more popular and we would be looking into the experimental very on the basis of uh, experimental verification next time. Thank you, thank you once again uh, to all of you for keeping patience during the lecture and uh, please do not forget to give your feedback, so that I can improve further. Thank you.